Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah Ati Rasulullah Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself and abdikul ajisu da'i fil miskeen rizal and mujahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to enter this holy month <coughs> Rabbil Thani and the month of Holy Qur'an. Every month is a dress of Holy Qur'an and from the uloom of awliyaullah this is the month in which Surat al-Yaseen is dressing the entire of creation and this way of marifa into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Manzil Qur'an that those whom love the Holy Qur'an they must know that the house in which emanates this reality Manzil Qur'an is the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad In this world of light there's always a qalb, a center point of energy in which these realities must be emanating. Everything from Allah's tawheed and oneness, it's not just everywhere, it emanates from a nucleus, from a point, a dot, a nuqt and that nuqt emanates out its power and that power is emanating from creation. La ilaha illallah is a qudra and a power that emanates through the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah This way of marifa and Gnosticism, this way of realities is for those whom are spiritually mature. Those whom are immature and wish to continue their childish behaviour then they seek something else that go back to kindergarten and sit there and learn how to finger paint. When you decide that you're going to be mature and Allah accepts your path of maturity, He sets you on a pace of what we call rijalullah. That those whom are seeking a path of maturity because many people think they're abdullah, oh I want to be abd. But uh, that, that's a very high rank and to be ubayd means to be the servant of an Abdullah is the way and the adab and before any of that… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You can open, you have to be rijalullah, that you have to be in a school of tarbiyah and training that takes away kindergarten mentality and making your diaper to be dirty. You have to be party trained, you have to be given disciplines, you have to be given all sorts of characteristics that are signs of maturity. So just in our physical school same, that they say, oh we can't start these grades until they know how to take care of themselves in the wush facility and they can't go to upper and higher grades if they continue to slap and hit and beat people in their classes. So everything that we learn in the physical world is an example of our spiritual path. Allah is looking to those inspiring those because there's murid and murad, those whom Allah has sought them means bringing them towards this path and those whom are inspired towards goodness and they understand I have to leave the lower character, the bad characteristics and I must progress and they meditate, they contemplate, they find a yearning within their heart 
to rise above bad character. Everyone knows when they make their diaper dirty means that when they have bad character, bad actions, it's the equivalent in, in Allah's presence and in the teachings of awliyaullah that you keep making your diaper dirty because the bad character is inflicted upon oneself. When the insan and the human decides, I'm not going to do that anymore and I have to rise above this process of putting my badness upon myself and upon everyone, they're inspired within their heart and take a path towards maturity in which to discipline oneself, discipline the character, discipline your mouth, discipline your hands. Today's mouth is hands and that's one of the miracles of Qur'an that Allah said, we are going to seal your lips when we bring you into the heavens because Allah is addressing the last days and the last days you would be right to assume must be then the worst of creation because they're coming right near the phase of death in which this whole world will be resurrected. And Allah is addressing miraculously, I'm going to seal your lips. The minute you die your lips will be sealed before you can make any testimony before the Divinely Presence. And then I'm going to ask your hands what you've done. Immediately drawing our attention to lips and hands are linked. And God Almighty is teaching that from your mouth comes hypocrisy, from your mouth comes every bad character. And now in the last days people don't even need to talk anymore but their fingers are doing the talking. And that's why Allah is inspiring with this, I'm going to make your fingers talk to me too. That don't think, oh I didn't say it by my lip but I typed it like a person with no mind. Allah is going to ask, everything you typed and every finger that you moved, I'm going to make that finger testify to me. One, what did it say? What did it do? Who did it say it to? And imagine if those fingers are, are, are making comments against those whom Allah loves. And that's why they don't have manners, they don't, they're not taught manners and they have no taqwa. When you so quickly are able to make your fingers be belligerent and horrific comments, horrific uh, writings, you have absolutely no taqwa, no consciousness. No sense of fear that, God forbid, this may be a pious servant of Allah one whom Allah has drawn a favour upon them, is, is, uh, has a, a love for them and you just typing, typing, typing nonsense. And Allah has many different understandings that don't come against my awliya, otherwise I declare war against you. That is because for their protection, that when Allah is giving to them, go out and balaq, go out and give a good guidance, balaq al mubeen, give a clear understanding from these teachings. You don't think Allah has got their back covered? And then Allah is teaching that if you come against my awliya, I'm actually going to declare war upon you because other people email Shaykh, are you worried that people are going to come against you for saying the truth? Why would I worry when I have Allah guarding me? The one whom typing bad things, saying bad things, can you really sleep at night tonight thinking Allah's guarding you? Or that you're so frail that anything can attack you and Allah will be nowhere to be found to help you. Allah is with those whom have good character, with Nabi'een. As Allah says in Holy Qur'an, I am with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Saliheen and those whom with them. Which, which of Nabi'een would tolerate somebody who types bad, belligerent, uh, dog character, bad character, is Siddiqeen with them? You think any shuhada, mushahada, those whom their hearts are open are with those types of people or they're typing things like that? 
for Salihin whom are righteous because they accompany Siddiqeen, they accompany Nabi'een, they accompany Shuhada. These are a category of, the, of a group that are always together. Salihin are never away from Shuhada. There's not a Salihin who became Salihin that doesn't sit with somebody who has mushahida. Because the food in which a Salihin requires, the blind can't help him. Salihin means pious and righteous servants. Not self proclaimed righteousness, but in the eyes of Allah, they have such a taqwa and such a, a sensitivity upon their soul that Allah deems them to be righteous. And in their righteousness, they can't eat regular food. We're not talking about physical. They can't take the sustenance of their teaching in regular teaching. Their sustenance, they must be sustained from spiritual teachings that, that revitalize their soul. So there's no Salihin on this earth that Allah made Salihin that does not accompany the shuhada. And those shuhada whom their hearts are open, mushahada, they, they witness what Allah wants them to witness at all times. Their heart is open and under Allah's command. When Allah wants them to see, they see. When Allah doesn't need them to see, they don't see. It's not in their control. And as a result, their heart of these mushahida, they're always in the presence of Siddiqeen. By the virtue and the power of these Siddiqeen, it keeps an energy upon them to keep their heart open at all times. And those Siddiqeen are the two gates of the Holy Kaaba that have hearts upon the doorknobs because the Kaaba is the heart of Prophet It's symbolic of the qalb and man's of Qur'an, it's the symbolic house of Allah the ancient house of Allah which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because everyone knows that the heart is a symbol of the Kaaba, that everyone holds a potential Kaaba within their being. When Allah is, sanctify my house, purify my house, wash and cleanse my house and circumambulate my home which is the heart of insan, the heart of this creation. And through this gift of the heart they can reach towards the Divinely Presence. Means that they must be accompanying the Nabi'een and as a result Allah is with them. When Allah is with them then must be good character and the, the discipline of good character, the ishq and love and muhabbat of good character. Those whom are devoid of good character is, is symbolic for them. You know that when we go out into social media, it's a weasels, there's a certain creature that can ignite snakes. They immediately come somewhere and they're able to ignite the snakes within people. And that's, that's one of the gifts that they have. Anywhere that they enter and begin to propagate this light, the snakes come out and they begin to show themselves. One is that they're not harming the shaykh and Allah is watching over them and if they in, insist on they're going to do something bad, Allah declares war on them and they don't wake by morning time. But when the snake comes out, it's for you to see what type of character you have. That's the sad part that when you reflect and you hear our words and, and you hear this, when this guidance comes out that these people whom become belligerent on just the hearing of Divine praise, on just the hearing of salawats upon Sayyidina Muhammad uh, you have to catch your snakes before you enter the grave. That when this type of creatures come out and all the snakes are ignited, then people who have this characteristic they should self-reflect that, why, why are my snakes being ignited? Why do I even have snakes? How do I come against these snakes? 
And if you don't believe you have the snakes and you have this bad character, wait till tonight and in your dreams you'll see snakes all around you and you'll see the snakes coming after you. And these are your bad characteristics and Allah is giving to you a warning. If you see the snakes now and you don't resolve your bad character and you don't seek a path in which to fix your bad character, these snakes are coming with you into the qabr. And this becomes the azab of your qabr, the, the punishment and the difficulty of your grave and it's your own doing, has nothing to do with Allah's punishment. Allah is giving to you an understanding that, look, look how you're ignited with bad character. You can never think you're righteous and that your righteousness allows you to be indecent and unpolite to other creation and to another human being. That's not righteousness, that's just the hypocrisy within bad, bad characteristics. And it allows the servant to see, look at their snakes, look at their bad character. And if you don't believe it say, Ya Rabbi show me my bad character and all night long you're going to dream of snakes. And these are all these bad characters trying to inflict harm upon the servant. If that's the case then they take a path in which to clean themselves. Tawasuf, tawasuf and Sufism and tariqahs were the process of cleaning oneself, washing oneself from the bad characteristics before they enter the grave. This is Allah's rahmah and mercy. Everyone has bad characteristics but for the one whom cleans themselves now before they enter the grave, that's the one whom is successful. But the one whom goes into the grave with all their bad characteristics is a difficulty. We pray that Allah inspire people to clean themselves, take a path in which to clean oneself, rid oneself of the bad nafs, bad desires and bad characteristics. Only then can they take away their difficulty and now move towards the light. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.